So office hours. Um, what I what I'll be using on Canvas is the course chat. It's a it's a small section you'll find on the left hand side. Uh, just click it, and there's a little chat room that'll open up. And I'll be there on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 12 to 1. So you're welcome to come in there. You have questions. Um, you're not sure about something. You didn't quite understand something in the text, or you have questions about an assignment. Uh, I'll be there uh, on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 12 to 1. Uh, you don't need a camera for that. You just can come in and uh, ask any questions you like. Um, this, the, the way I designed the course, uh, we will. It's not uh, what they would call a synchronous course, meaning that we have to meet at a certain time every day. Uh, this is more uh, what they call an asynchronous course. That means that uh, it's kind of up to you when you decide uh, to engage in Canvas, when you decide to log in, when you decide to look at the assignments, uh, depending on your schedule, that's up to you. But of course, the assignments are going to be due on certain times, but when you log in, excuse me if you hear that, that's my dog. <laughs> so I think he's trying to get in. So uh, keep in mind that. So uh, the basics of what we're going to go over, we're going to go over a lot of uh, philosophical theories over ethics. What that means is that uh, there's very traditional approaches to ethics in Western philosophy, and we're going to examine some of them. So since this is an intro course, uh, we're just going over the basics and kind of give you an overview. Uh, if you've ever taken another intro course, like intro to biology, intro to the psychology, you, you just get an overview of, uh, in general, what the discipline is about, what, what are the different areas talk about. Because you can get very precise about ethics, and some people are experts on just one part. Uh, we're not going to go that deep. We're just going to give you uh, the basics of what most people will know if uh, you study ethics. So there's two texts, and I think there's some confusion about this. Uh, and I've been talking with the bookstore, and it seems like I have a problem with the bookstore every single semester. But uh, there's going to be two books that you're going to use, and there's good reason for that. Um, the one is called The Ethical Life, and the, and the other one is called The Fundamentals of Ethics. Now, one is a primary source reader, and that's going to be the ethical life. That's the actual writings of the philosopher that we're going to be talking about. That's their original paper. The fundamentals of ethics, on the other hand, is kind of more like a, a short textbook to kind of give you general terms, definitions, things like that. So they're a companion set. They go together. Uh, what we'll do it, and what you'll see in the semester uh as we get into it that there's going to be readings from uh usually readings from both books uh each week they're not very long but uh what they do is play off of each other that's why i have both of those books so if you're reading the original text in the ethical life uh you're not well what's this word i've never heard this before uh there's a chapter that goes along with that reading and the fundamentals of ethics and kind of breaks it down, helps break it down for you. Um, I know the bookstore is does not right now have the fundamentals of ethics. It only has the ethical life. Do uh, you have time to get the book? I recommend it in the announcements if you look in announcements on Canvas. Um, take the time. Uh, you can find it on all sorts of online sources. Of, um, Amazon, you can probably find a copy. Uh, if you prefer an ebook, uh, Bible Source, I, I put up a, a, I think a link up there. Um, that's a good place for ebooks. Uh, it's up to you. If you find it cheaper uh, than what the bookstore is uh, selling for, or the Ethical Life, whatever, you're welcome to order that. We have some time before we get into the books. Uh, I'm not going to push you guys in the books right away. We're going to start some other stuff first, and then we'll slowly work into the books. Uh, any questions about that?
No questions? All right. So then also I want to mention too, it's the fourth edition. There's a new edition out, the fifth edition. Uh, you don't have to worry about getting the latest edition. Uh, if you find an older edition too, let's say you find a really cheap version of uh, version uh, edition three, that's fine. You can use that. Uh, just keep in mind some of the readings are a little bit different, especially in the ethical life. They tend to change every edition. They they change out uh, some and then they put in new ones. Uh, so keep in mind that. Uh, just check in the table of contents uh, along with the syllabus of, you know, which readings are in the book. Um, so that's it for for these two. Now, let's get into, I think, what we really want to get into, or what you really want to hear is uh, what you're going to need for this course. Now, since it's an online course, what you're what I want to make sure everybody has, you have uh, some Adobe Reader uh, or something that can read PDF files. So the the first reading that I have is a PDF for you guys. Uh, so make sure you have a PDF reader. If you if you don't, let me know and I'll help you out. Uh, make sure your browser is up to date. Uh, whatever you're using so that it's compatible with Canvas. Uh, and other stuff like uh, the main thing I've noticed, students will try to do a lot of their work off of their smartphones. Try really not to do that. Uh, I'm actually learning about this myself right now in computer programming. When you develop a program for mobile devices is a lot different from when you uh, make up a program for a regular PC or laptop. So Canvas hasn't really developed a nice, you know, flow through between mobile and, and uh, PC. So what I want to make sure if you, especially, I mean, there's no problem, you know, checking your grades or something like that on your smart device. But don't take the quizzes. There will be quizzes. Don't take the quizzes on uh, your phone. Try to take the quizzes on a laptop or PC um, because, yeah, it's not really uh, designed to take it on your smartphone, okay? So I don't want you guys to mess up or, or click something by accident or you can't see the full screen or something like that happens with when you're trying to take a quiz. So try to make sure you you use uh, the same computer for that. Uh, Netiquette, just, uh, you can get into detail, but uh, just general, uh, you know, consider and respectful things uh, to keep in mind. Uh, we'll have a discussion board. We'll have some back and forth about some serious issues. This is ethics. We're gonna get into uh, controversial issues, of course, but remember to kind of keep it uh, respectful, right? You're not personally attacking anybody. We'll talk about that when we talk about uh, logical fallacies. Uh, what you want to look at is the argument people are presenting. Uh, philosophers were very popular for debating each other and arguing with each other, but we do so in a respectful way. Uh, we're looking at what the person is saying, what the uh, subject matter is really about, and not just uh, cheap shots at the, each other or, or anything like that. So in general, uh, you can uh, debate with each other. I encourage that. Uh, just keep it respectful, that's all. So what we'll have in, uh, for assignments. So we'll have discussion posts, like I, I mentioned right now, and that's where you'll be uh, participating. I'll have questions each week, uh, and then you'll respond to those questions. Uh, you, what you want, and make sure you do this. Uh, I want really well, well, this is a philosophy course. I want really well thought out uh, responses. Um, when I first started teaching uh, online, uh, I would get a lot of responses like, you know, oh, that's a really great uh, point. 
And then that's it. It's like, well, okay, but that's not helping anybody. That's not really in depth. That's not what I'm looking for. So uh, I'm making the requirement that when you post a response and when you first uh, post uh, a discussion post, that they should be at least three paragraphs. So every discussion post should be at least three paragraphs because they're going to be deep questions. They're going to be very serious questions. You know, uh, they may be questions about abortion or animal rights or something like that. You should get into it and, and, and show me what you learned from the book, not simply just quick uh, responses. Like that's a really interesting point and then that's it. So I want some in-depth uh, responses. So you have discussion posts, that's when you're answering the question and then participation is when you respond to somebody else. So you should respond at least to one other of your uh, classmates. And so you'll have about a week to uh, post your uh, discussion post to answer the question. And then you'll have about a week to respond uh, before you move to the next discussion post. Questions about that? No questions? Okay. So there's going to be a group assignment. I know people hate group assignments, but uh, they're also important. And this is where the real ethics happens. Um, you've got to learn to work together. Doesn't change in the professional field or anything else. Uh, you always have to work with other people. So with a, it's a really simple assignment, though. I'm not trying to stress anybody out. Uh, usually what I've had happen in the past, uh, again, when I first started teaching is that students would ask me for the PowerPoint, you know, can I give them the PowerPoint? Uh, the problem with that is that, you know, a PowerPoint is a summary that I put together of the chapters, right? But you remember far, and this comes from my psychology background, you remember far better when you put your own summary together, when you put in your own words and you arrange it, you remember that material much better. So what I've done is that I want, and I've already separated the class out into groups. What I want you to do with your group is I've assigned you a particular uh, set of chapters, a particular week to create a PowerPoint summary of that section. So with your group, you're going to put together, you're not doing it for every week, you're just doing it for one week. Um, and you're going to put together a PowerPoint. Uh, you'll submit it as a group. I'll, I'll grade it and then I'll post up a copy for everybody else. Uh, I think it's much more beneficial. So your audience in mind is, is your is your peers, right? So you have to think about how do I explain it to my classmates? How do I explain in an easy, simple way what the chapters are talking about? And I know also too, and this is going to be part of uh, one of our chapters that we talk about, you know, when you work together, you know, sometimes people don't work together. Sometimes people like don't contribute to the group, right? Or they think that, well, everybody else will just do the work and I'll just lay back. Uh, what you'll also submit to is a report. So everybody, and I've already put up a template, so it's already set up where you just fill in the boxes and answer the questions. Um, but what you'll do is just, uh, as along with the uh, PowerPoint, you're going to submit a personal report of how the group did, what you guys do well, uh, who contributed what to the assignment, things like that. So every so everybody has a chance to uh, chime in to speak and, you know, air any grievances and say, well, this person really didn't contribute, or these other three people did, you can let me know in the report. So those will be due uh, periodically and you'll see that. Uh, there's gonna be a midterm exam. Uh, that's usually right before spring break. Uh, it's going to be comprehensive from that uh, point. So everything from uh, this week, week one, all the way to uh, right before spring break, 
Uh, that's what the midterm will be over. The midterm is pretty straightforward. Uh, it'll be, um, I'll give you the day to do it. So I usually give you guys from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. I know everybody has different schedules, you know, so try, to try to accommodate that, I gave you guys almost a full day to uh, submit your midterm. Uh, there'll be a mixture of multiple choice questions, uh, short answer questions, and long answer questions. Uh, and we'll once we get closer to that, I'll have a review and we'll go over some examples of what to expect on the midterm. You also have six quizzes, uh, and those dates are already set, so you know when the quizzes are. They're here. So the first quiz will be on February 12th. It'll open up at 7 a.m. and then it'll close at 11 p.m. on, on February 19th. Uh, and it'll be over the first three weeks. So before we get into the book, and I'll get into this when we uh, talk about the schedule a little bit, uh, it'll be comprehensive over the first couple of weeks. And then from then on, it'll be pretty straightforward, I think. Uh, the next will be the 19th. So you see that once one quiz is closed, the other will open. Uh, for the most part, sometimes I, I skip a, a week or something and you won't have a quiz there. So uh, just make sure you keep an eye out. Um, I highly recommend that since I gave you all the uh, dates, put them in your smartphone, put them in your calendar. Uh, if you like pencil paper calendars, fine. Just keep in mind, don't forget the quizzes. I've had students who just, well, I, I forgot there was a quiz. It's like, well, I gave you the dates. Uh, it's up to you to keep track and make sure that you're on schedule. Uh, most of the quizzes are multiple choice. I'm not gonna say all of them, and I'll let you know if there's a quiz that's not multiple choice beforehand. But if it's a multiple choice quiz, uh, usually there are about 10 questions and their time. So I give you 15 minutes to answer 10 questions and you'll have uh, two tries. And I take the higher score out of the two. So for example, let's say you take the quiz, the first quiz on February 13th. Okay. Uh, you don't think you did very well. You think you kind of missed some. So you can go back, study again, and then take the quiz before the 19th a second time. And if you do better the second time or the first time, whichever, I'll take the highest out of the two. And that'll go for most of the quizzes, unless it's not a multiple choice quiz, then I'll let you know, like I mentioned. And let's see. And then finally, there's a final paper. So there's a thesis paper. And if you take a philosophy class, for the most part, you always write a, a paper. Um, I'll give you about a month to work on the paper. So right after uh, we take the midterm and we come back from spring break, we'll, we'll start talking about the final. Uh, you have time to put together a good uh, final thesis paper. It's gonna be an argumentative paper. So you're gonna pick one of the topics that I'll post. I'll post, I usually post around nine or 10 different uh, ethical topics. You're gonna pick one to write about, and then you're gonna uh, argue for or against uh, the issue. And you'll develop a thesis, and actually what you're gonna do then, and by the time, at that point, we've gone through a lot of the material and the theories, you're gonna start using some of the theories and some of the stuff you learned and apply it to your paper. So we'll talk about more in depth when we get into that. But just to give you a heads up uh, what to expect. Questions about the assignments before I move on. Um, you had mentioned that you, uh, excuse me, uh, that you had already picked out groups for the PowerPoint presentation. Is that correct? That's correct, yes. When will those be posted to see who we're working with? Um, they are posted, and I'll show you just in a bit where you can find those. That's pretty simple. Let, let me uh, switch screens for a second and I'll show you on Canvas where you can find your group.
Can you guys see the, the browser screen of Canvas? Yeah, we can see it. OK. So where do you go to find your group? Just go to people on the left-hand side here. And then you see everybody, but then there's a tab for uh, project groups. And then that's where you'll find your group. So you can just click down, and you'll have the names for everybody in your group. And just by yourself. All right, cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So usually we have three members per group. You're going to divide up the work. Uh, however you like to do it, uh, divided work, just uh, put in your report when you turn it in, how you divided up the work. Uh, and what I have particular uh, expectations I have for that presentation. So let me. Go back, I think, to the. Do I have it? Mm, no, actually, we can just go here. So if you go to assignments, you'll have the PowerPoint group assignment here. Just click on it. Uh, it's going to load. Nope, it's not going to load. Okay. So it's pretty simple what I'm looking for. I just want an overview of those chapters. And let me go into uh, the modules. So what I would do is actually work on the modules a lot throughout this, because I have it sectioned off per week. So you know what you should be doing. But up here at the PowerPoint group uh, section here, you'll find, uh, I think, everything you'll need for that. Uh, you have uh, the dates. So if you click on here, it opens up. Uh, this is the format that I'm looking for. I'll be grading on a, on a 40 point scale. Uh, what I'll be looking for is um, formatting. Did you follow the, the criteria? And we'll go over the criteria right now. Uh, grammar, make sure you're spell checking, uh, your proofreading. Um, I've had students <laughs> misspell the, the philosopher's name and theory and, you know, very basic stuff. Make sure you're checking that organization. How did you organize it? And examples uh, of the chapter. Did, how did you incorporate the information from the book, from the chapter into your PowerPoint? So for the formatting, I want a general statement explaining the topic of the text. So what's the chapter about? Uh, I want a short, real, uh, precise summary of the main points. So you don't have to talk about everything in those chapters, every single point. Give me what you should remember, what we should take away from this chapter. Um, and also questions and answers where you clarify for yourself. So if you had a question, uh, when you were reading the chapter and your group got together and actually they came up with an answer, it's like, okay, now I get what they're talking about. Share with us, uh, share with your peers, uh, because they probably had the same question as well when they were reading. And um, important vocabulary terms, philosophy has a lot of new vocabulary. We have a lot of big words uh, in this discipline. So uh, make sure you define those in your presentation, make sure you're you explain what those mean. Uh, and then uh, original examples to explain. This is where I think it's really helpful. Come up with your own example of what they're talking about in that chapter, you know, uh, to help illustrate that. Uh, people remember examples much better than definitions sometimes. So use those examples. Try to make it memorable. Remember, your audience is not really me, it's your peers. That's who you should be uh, presenting to. This is what the presentation is for. So put it in such a way where you think your, your fellow students will, will be really easy way to remember certain things in the chapter. And what you're pre presenting on and when it's due is here. So the schedule's already made. Uh, so the first group, you're going to be presenting on chapter 19 in the Fundamentals of Ethics, that's FE, and a reading by Harry Gensler called Cultural Relativism in the Ethical Life, EL. 
So you'll be presenting on those two. That's what your PowerPoint is going to be about. Uh, and it'll be due on September 9th, uh, usually before 11 p.m. And the same goes for the other groups. So just find your group in the where I showed you right now under people and group projects, and then see which date and which material you'll be presenting. If you have questions that you're not quite sure uh, what the presentation, let's say, I'm trying to think here, um, if you get confused about the Leviathan, it's actually not a, I'll admit it's not an easy text. Um, let me know, I'm here to help you. Uh, you're welcome to get feedback from me if you're not sure, like, okay, is this the right way? Are we going the right way with this presentation? You know, uh, I'm here to help. Questions about that? Uh, yeah, are this incorrect, except for six? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Say it again. Six, would that be last fall? Oh. Um, uh, you're breaking up. Sorry. Not this first semester. I think he's trying to oh. 2020. Oh, I see. September? Yeah, no, this is. Oh, okay. I think I I uploaded the wrong one. That was from us. Yeah, because it says DACC Ethics 5 2020. Yeah, my mistake. I'll, I'll upload the new one. I don't know why the old one's there. Okay, I'll fix that right now. But it, it's at the same place. Maybe that I, let's see, did I take down the old one? See what happened. Oh, I see. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, I uploaded the, the old one. Uh, I'll take it down, but it's, it's going to be in the same section. So I'll just put it right here, but I'll take down the old one and put the new one up. Thank you for spotting that. Any other questions? So uh, what you'll do is you'll submit it here. Just click on uh, the first one, and then you'll uh, attach your PowerPoint uh, when you submit it. And let me I have a back. question about the submission. Yes. Yes. Um, so does one person have to submit it or everybody in the group needs to submit it? Uh, only one person. Because it'll it's that already paired. Sense. Yeah. It uh canvas would if I set you in groups, it, it already kind of pairs everybody together. Uh but what you will submit, this is us gonna get you right now, which what you will submit individually is the uh, is the report which is here and so the the report the this is where you can download this and fill it out uh, that's where you're gonna fill in your information from your group the tasks so that's you know what each group member was responsible for, any issues, comments, contributions, things like that. It's really simple, but that's what each uh, group member will submit as well. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah, okay. And then while we're here, um, in the modules. Uh, the lecture videos, they're going to be up here. I have the first couple up to the midterm. Uh, so I've already recorded uh, the, the logic lecture video, which we'll talk about right now. This is going to be the first stuff we're going to get into. Uh, and so you'll find a lot of the recordings here. Let's see. Uh, as also, when uh, you uh, submit your group assignment for PowerPoint. Uh, I'll post up the copy here under the PowerPoint group project. Uh, right below, I'll put um, the first uh, PowerPoint from group one, and then you'll, that's where you'll be able to find everybody's uh, group PowerPoints. Uh, I took the liberty of also providing some 
just tips, some great stuff that I found online, uh, videos, uh, kind of tutorials, things to get ready for the semester, how to keep on track, how to organize uh, your binder, things like that. Uh, you'll find some great stuff there. And then going to week one, uh, there's a student resource that goes along with the textbook. It has some practice quizzes. That's where you can go online and uh, and take some practice quizzes and, and prep for the different chapters. Uh, more recently by Lewis Vaughn, that's the PDF that we're going to start with. This is where we're going to first start reading before we get into the books. Uh, there's an introduction uh, in the discussion board. This is not for a grade. This particular post, this is just to get familiar with everybody, introduce yourself. Uh, resources, so when we get to uh, the final paper, uh, it'll have to be a cited paper, either MOA or APA. Uh, I have a little bit of a guide there to help you. If you have questions about that as well, when we get to that, I'll help you out. And there's some great videos that go along that I found this series on, um, on YouTube, and I think it's a really great. It's a, it's made by philosophers, uh, graduate students, and professors. Uh, they put together some really great explanations uh, over some of the stuff that we're going to be talking about. And so you'll find links to the videos here. And then there's a practice quiz. Uh, this is not going to count against you. It's just so you become familiar. You can take it right now, just so you see the format. If you've never taken a quiz on Canvas. You'll see what it looks like, and so you'll be ready when we come to the real quizzes. So there's some more videos there. Uh, I also gave you guys uh, a handout to practice some logical fallacies, which will definitely be on the first quiz. And then you'll see in week three, the first quiz is there. Um, the first official discussion post is also there. And and then it'll go like that, and you'll see uh, group one when their stuff is due. And you just keep in mind, you try, just try to keep track of all that. And if we go all the way, and then you'll see finals week, there'll be the final essay. And I have a lot of guides on how to write a philosophy paper and stuff like that when we get to that point. So try to follow the, the weeks. That's how I kind of arranged it, the modules. Uh, announcements, always check uh, if for some reason I have to change a date or something goes wrong, uh, or I have to reschedule something. I'll usually post uh, an alert on announcements right away to let you guys know what's going on. And oh, also the chat you can find here. So during my office hours, just click on uh, the tab here, and then uh, this chat room will open up, and you I'll be here, and just let me know if you have any questions or anything like that. What else? I think that's it. Any other questions? Oh, Canvas. No? All right. So those are the assignments. So you'll have a post, a response to somebody else's post, uh, the group PowerPoint, a bid term, quizzes, and a final paper. And that'll be for the semester. Uh, what else? Late work, I usually don't accept late work unless it's some um, unfortunate hardship. Like you have a serious, you unfortunately got COVID, for example, or something like that. Of course, I can work with you. Uh, but since I have most of the dates already set, you know when things are taking place, you know way ahead of time. If you, you know, let me know some situation is coming up, let me know now. Uh, don't wait. I've had students tell me, oh, I couldn't do the assignment, something happened, but they tell me two weeks after the assignment. Uh, they never talked to me before that, so that's not gonna work for me. Uh, so make sure that you let me know way beforehand, as soon as possible, uh, if you have something coming up 
just shoot me an email. Um, and I think that's it. So to get into the subject matter, so what are you going to be doing this week? Uh, what I do for the first couple of weeks, because I know it sometimes takes people also a while to get their books, is I don't start with the books right away. Uh, and there's also another point to this too. I like the books a lot that I chose, but there no book is perfect. What I think the book is lacking is a kind of a background in logic. So we do offer a logic course here, uh, but most people haven't taken logic, I found out. So what I do is a little bit of a crash course in basic logic and philosophical logic to kind of give you guys a prep and ready for when we get into the, the textbook. So the transition to the textbook is easier. And it's just helpful in general in life uh, to learn to think logically and critically. So what we'll be using for the first couple of weeks is uh, I'll supplement that material with a really great uh, chapter from another book uh, by the philosopher Lewis Vaughn. He's uh, developed a chapter called Moral Reasoning. Uh, I take it from a book, and so that's why the pages are uh, are there. So you're just going from that PDF. Uh, that's what we'll be covering for the first three weeks. We'll be going over that, and uh, to help you guys, the YouTube videos that I showed you those links. As, as along with my lecture that I have already developed over this. So that's what we'll be working on. Uh, and that's what your first um, quiz and discussion post will be about, is the stuff that we learned in the first three weeks. So make sure you start reading that, you start going over that material. Um, it's really great. And it'll help you, hopefully you'll see after the first three weeks, You'll see why talking about argument structures, talking about inferences, premises, that stuff is going to make reading this stuff a lot easier. Does everybody, does everybody got that? So we're starting with the PDF, and we'll hold off on the the book until week four, and then that's where we start. And once we get to week four, this is kind of a warm up, but once we get to week four, that's where we really start. Uh, the show going and you'll see there's a lot of readings they're not too long but i'll give you a heads up it's philosophy they're going to be dense so it's only a couple of pages but they're deep pages so you're going to have to sit there and kind of think about it uh the recommendation this is what i got when i was a student uh starting on philosophy you should read the text at least five times you don't have to read it all in one day five times but Space it out throughout the week so that you're give yourself more than once to work over the material. A lot, a lot of this stuff is not going to like click the first time you read it. You have to kind of go back and read it again and then read it again. And you're just like, oh, okay, now I now I start to understand what's going on. So give yourself time. I highly recommend come up with a reading schedule for yourself make designated times uh, throughout the week where you're working on this. Uh, this is not the kind of class where you wanna cram on a Sunday and try to like read everything that's not gonna work like that. Uh, you'll probably just confuse yourself and then forget everything the next day. So give yourself time to think about it, read a chapter, think about it, uh, and then go to the next chapter and you'll see. But uh, like week six looks like a lot, but it's actually, those chapters are really short. Uh, they're only a couple of pages, but it will take you some time, like I said, to think about them and consider what are they saying, why is it important. And then I've already designated the midterm, March 19th, set it open at 11 a.m., close at 11 p.m. Uh, that's before spring break. We'll come back, we'll start again, and this is where we started working towards the paper. And then the paper is going to be due on May 13th before 8 p.m. I think that's it. Any last questions?
You guys are quiet. <laughs> I just hope you guys are alive. A uh, quick question. If we yeah. find uh, any of this in like an audio book form, do you oppose to us listening to it also? No, no. If you find it in an audio book, that's fine as well. Whatever works for you. Uh, that's what I was hoping too. Some of the, the PowerPoints and I, my lectures as well over the chapters that I posted. Uh, if, if you can listen to them on your smartphone or whatever while you're driving, that works for you, that's fine as well. Are you going to have um, a lecture for every reading portion that we do each week? Yes. Yes, I've already recorded uh, since I've taught this online before. Yeah, I've all I have all the lectures, uh, and I'll right now all the lectures up to the midterm are posted, and then after the midterm, I'll post the the second half of lectures. Make sense? Yes, thank you. So yeah, you can start today. Uh, Start looking over the PDF that I mentioned in the end of the schedule here. Uh, and then go through the logic lecture that I have already posted under uh, class lectures. And I'm going to start explaining what those chap what that chapter is about and what we're going to be discussing for the first couple of weeks. Uh, that first one, since it's three weeks, uh, that lecture is really long. Uh, so Divide it up. This is why I say uh, you decide how you're going to schedule yourself throughout the week. So if you want to spend an hour each day or, or whatever, uh, fix up yourself so that you but make sure that you work it out in such a way where you cover all the material by the end of the week. But how you this is this is kind of the good and bad thing about online courses. You set up your schedule, but then again, you set up your schedule, right? So you know. Life gets hectic, things get in the way. Uh, you're going to have to learn how to manage yourself and make sure that you keep up, you know, and not fall behind. So that's what I'm saying. Really space it out. Don't put all your eggs in one basket and try to do everything on a Sunday or something like that. Because uh, people have, I know have done that and then something happens on Sunday, an emergency, and they didn't get any time to look at anything for that week. So don't do that to yourself. Try to work it out so you give yourself plenty of time to cover the material. All right. Anything else? I'm gonna take that silence as a no. <laughs> so, um, all right. So then, what I'll do is I'll. Uh, thank you uh, for mentioning the, the schedule. I'll post up the correct schedule with the correct dates right now. Um, but yeah, today get started. Introduce yourself on the discussion page. Um, start looking at the PDF. Uh, if you want to keep it, uh, you can download it if you and print it out if that you prefer that, or you can just keep it online. Uh, just save it. Uh, but start looking at that um, and the lecture as well. All right. Thank you. All right. You guys have a good week. Let me know. Uh, and so on Thursday, I'll be on the chat if you have any questions. Or you can always send me an email as well. All right. Cool. Thank you so much. All right. Have a good day, everybody. Is the uh... The chat, I apologize, is that portion required? No, that's just off my office hours. If we have questions for you and everything, you'll be available at that time, correct? Yes, those, those are just my virtual office hours. Excellent. Thank you very much, Professor. Have a great day. Okay, you too.